Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Paul. And this is Senex. And we are bringing you the next game in the FRB Grand Tournament. This is from the round of four, aka the semifinals. Today's players are going to be Gosu T Gun and Gosu Vibe. Yes, Gosu T Gun spawning as the pink Zerg in the bottom left hand corner of 6M Taldarim, while Gosu Vibe spawning as the green Zerg in the top right corner. For those who don't know, 6M Taldarim is a little bit different from ordinary Taldarim. There is uh, a high ground in your main base, there's a little ramp you can see right at the front of it, and also the destructible rocks at the third base have been removed to kind of emphasize the macro nature of FRB. Yes, indeed. So. We'll see how these players do adjust to the map differences as well as the uh, mineral and gas differences. And are they are they the first CVZ? I think uh, was no, there was one. a yeah. CVZ in the round of 16. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there was another ZZ, ZVZ. Wrong! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they are definitely correct, though. They are pioneers. There that has is not true. been a ton of experimentation yet on FRB. We're still really learning a lot of the builds and strategies that are most effective. And ZVZ is one of those matches that, because there's kind of a bit of a stigma associated with, associated with it, I should say, a lot of people not quite liking the matchup. There's not too many games that have been played or analyzed. No, so we will see how these players do um, do, do their builds. We do see the spawning pool, of course, dropping down for our pink suit. Zerg, I'm sorry, Ghostu T Gun had to clear my throat there, as well as getting his gas. In the meanwhile, Ghostu Vibe is going for a fast expansion. Yeah, so already a very distinct difference in approach between these two teammates. Ghostu T Gun obviously going for a much more aggressive style. He'll be able to get quite a bit of gas, because for those who do not know, this is a rich Vespine geyser. You get six per trip and only need three drones on it to fully utilize. So if he wants to move into early Baneling play or anything like that, he will definitely have the resources available for it. While this early expansion is going to give Vibe a little bit of a later advantage, he will definitely pull ahead if he can successfully defend it. Yes, indeed. So we do see by finally getting his extractor up here. So getting his gas a lot, a lot behind T Gun, and like you said, T Gun could very well be going for Baneling play, which I mean he'll have to do a lot of damage. And in all honesty, with the spawns being this far apart, not sure if that's going to be the best option. But we'll see how he does play it out. And he's currently getting his speed, whereas his opponent doesn't even have his spawning pool finished yet. One very nice thing for Zerg versus Zerg on 6M Taldarim is because there is now a high ground in your main, you can get a queen on that ramped block. You probably want two because while one can do it, they have to be perfectly positioned, but it makes it a little bit easier to defend against any kind of Zergling runbys. Right now we see the metabolic boost on the way and also T-Gun taking his own expansion, but he is getting the Baneling Nest, so he might want to expand behind aggression. Yes, indeed, T-Gun's going to have to do lots of damage with the Bane Links that he does eventually create, and or else he'll just basically be behind this game. His hatchery is not even halfway finished as at his natural. Now we do see T-Gun coming up here with about four Zerglings right now, so he's going to force five into making a few more Zerglings than he did already have. Four, in fact, are in production as well as the Queen, and that should be enough to hold off these Zerglings for now. Yeah, these four Zerglings probably not going to be able to do too much more damage as they're getting sandwiched in between the Queen. Also, this Spine Crawler is perfectly placed by Vibe. It's exactly what he needs. If he can get both of these Queens onto the ramp, he can block the ramp off, and any Zerglings that try to do a run by will be poked away at by the Spine Crawler. In fact, it looks like that's about to happen right now. Yes, both of those Zerglings trying to run up and just totally unable to get past the Wallen and immediately killed off by the Spine Crawler. Yeah, that's right. And now Tegan actually doesn't really have any Zerglings up there to morph into Banelings. Um, perhaps he's just going to chill out a little bit and use them defensively. Um, of course, he doesn't want to waste Banelings. He sees that he's not going to be able to get up into the main base. And actually, there's some Zerglings up here from Tegan, currently with Speeder. Are going to get some more scouting information. Whereas Vibe, he really doesn't have any information at all about what Tegan's going for. Yeah. This aggression from T-Gun has given him a bit of an advantage. He's felt a lot more comfortable than his opponent droning up. So uh, there was a whole bunch of Zerglings made by Vibe right now that really aren't able to do all that much against the Speedlings. Oh. And oh. There are Banelings in the main base. I don't know if you saw that. Um, and they're actually oh, chasing yes, down these drones the right corner. now. Yeah, they're chasing down these drones right now. Of course, one of them does get exploded. Oh, one of them might get a lot of kills. Looks like it didn't actually get any workers killed there. 
Yeah, until you get the plus two attack on Banelings, you're not able to kill any workers in one hit. So uh, definitely a little bit of a lucky break from Vi right there, being able to snipe the first one, because this is a whole lot of weak drones right now. But behind that, Vi was able to get his lair up considerably before his opponent. It hasn't even been started by Vibe. So if he decides to move into a more tech-oriented play, for example, a Spire or Speed Roaches, he might have a pretty big window of opportunity to hurt his opponent a lot. Now Ghosty T again does have a ton of banelings here that are, once again, as I said, acting defensively as far as keeping the Zerglings off of the drones, but Vibe actually moves up here with his four Zerglings and is going to try to go for some drone kills. Will he be able to take out the one? He does get one kill there, and it's currently keeping all four of those Zerglings alive, so doing a little bit of poking here and there, trying to keep his opponent on his feet as best as he can. Some very good scouting as well from Vibe, making sure that uh, he knows what tech his opponent is going for. Seeing that lair probably caught him a little bit off guard. He doesn't quite know why his opponent went for that. And in fact, I honestly don't know why he went for that incredibly fast lair either. Right now, T-Gun has really not utilized that early tech investment. I'd really expect to see him throwing down some kind of tech structure soon. Now, it does look like we are having some Banley explosions, of course, going off against the Zerglings of Vibe. And basically, Tegan just losing a lot of minerals for maybe like one or two Zergling kills. Not really worth it. Now, in the meantime, we do see Ghost Revive getting his third base up here and continuing with his macro advantage as far as economy goes. But let's actually look at the income tab. We have, yeah, we do have 40 for Vibe. So he's definitely ahead in income. And hopefully, he'll be able to get enough information to make the right kind of units, or else he might just end up really vulnerable here. Yeah, because the Spire is on the way from T-Gun, so he's going to be transitioning into Mutalisks, and that can be very effective on six mineral field, one high yield gas maps, just because the Extractor obviously is mm. a high yield gas, and so you get a quick surge of gas, even though it's a little bit less overall. However, at the same time, Vibe also going for his own Spire, so pretty interesting decision right there. Yeah, and also, I don't know if you saw that, but three more spine crawlers are actually being produced for Tegan, so I think he really wants to invest in this attack. Of course, he's also getting his third at the same time, so we'll, I guess he just wants to make sure that he's defended. Now, he's currently going for this third. He's going to force Vibe to move some units out here, and we do have two Banelings that might get these Zerglings. Of course, Tegan, ooh, loses a lot of Zerglings right there, and a big group. He almost got the hatchery, but it looks like he is going to get turned away for now. Yeah, that hatchery save by Vibe is very, very good for Ooh. him. And pretty big Zergling hit, in fact. Yes, as all of his units were getting away, Vibe really punishing T-Gun for that aggression, killing off a huge group of Zerglings right there. Though, right now, the Mutalists are on the way from T-Gun, so uh, he might be able to immediately get in and punish his opponent. The Spire only just now finishing for Vibe. Yeah, Vibe does have a lot of gas saved up and quite a few minerals, so he will be able to get his own Mutalist out here. But T-Gun, at this point in time, does have the, the Muta advantage. And actually, Vibe going for this hatchery, he might be able to take it out regardless of the fact that the Mutas are there. But it does look like he pushed away Vibe and is going to hold on to his third base. Both of these players are almost getting the thirds there. Yeah, though, uh, obviously because of Vibes went up so much earlier than his opponent, the longer this game goes on, the more of a Mutalisk advantage he's going to be able yeah. to get. I really think that Tigo needs to be moving his Mutals out across the map, though, ultimately, even as I say that, he's kind of missed his window of opportunity as five are just about to spawn for Vibes. So he had a small timing window where, because he got the tech much earlier than his opponent, the macro advantage of Vibe wouldn't be as pronounced, but really it's going to be pretty hard for him to continue competing uh, when he does not have as early access to that rich Vespine gas at the third. Yeah, T-Gun has basically just invested, from what I can remember, two major tech choices where he didn't actually get them to pay off. Of course, he got the Baneling early in the game, which he really didn't do much with his Banelings, and then, of course, he got the Mutas really early, and like you said, has not done much at all with them, and is actually pretty far behind right now. Yeah, definitely the supplies suggesting that T-Gun at 77 supply against Vibes 97. A 20 supply difference in an FRB game is really pronounced, particularly since Vibe is also taking his fourth, definitely wanting to play a macro game against his opponent, and it doesn't look like T-Gun has any idea this is going up, doesn't have any units rallied there to even check it out. So, once again, the longer he waits, the harder it's going to be for him to continue competing in the Mutalisk Wars. Yeah, and it looks like Vibe almost was able to take out that Spire right now. He does have more Mutas than his opponent. Of course, he would, actually, never mind. He doesn't have more up here now. They're currently even. Is, 
with the Queen and Spore Crawlers there, it looks like T-Gun should be pretty safe and okay as far as holding on to that Spire goes. But Vibe really wants it. He's trying to get up there, man. Yeah, Vibe really wanted to punish that kind of questionable positioning from that Spire as he can swoop in and really deal damage to that whenever he feels like it. A Spore Crawler going up, I don't really think that's enough. Honestly, I feel like T-Gun almost needs to build another Spire somewhere if he really <laughs> wants to invest in the Mutalus tech, or he could definitely do some kind of transition. He's investing in the level 2 armor upgrade, or in fact, has his level 1 armor oh. upgrade about to complete? Well, oh, but <laughs> Vi was able to take out the Spire right before the upgrade finished for T-Gun, and that was an excellent building takeout for Vibe. Oh, wow, yeah. Definitely a big, big problem for T-Gun right now as his opponent's level 2 armor is already on the way. There's also a big group of Zerglings kind of posturing around in the middle of the map just looking at the units tab. There are in fact no Zerglings currently on the field for T-Gun and while he has a single Mutalisk of advantage, those 36, now 52 Zerglings are going to be really dangerous as they run right into his opponent's base. Now T-Gun does have a few Banelings that will hopefully be enough to deal with the Zerglings and it looks like T-Gun's pushing away these Mutas for now, currently he is at 20 mutas, whereas his opponent is at 22. Ooh. Yeah, and just a little bit of back and forth action right there, but once again, the Zerglings being really dangerous. Banelings are extremely effective against them, but there's just so many on the field for Vibe right now. They're just not particularly effective right now. They're just going blow for blow. However, Vibe's definitely coming out ahead and leaves the game Ooh. from his opponent. No GG, even against a teammate, so... <laughs> it's probably that probably happens to him all the time or something but all right guys thanks for tuning in to that one and we do have some more games from this series that will be continuing on pretty shortly here what did you think that was a pretty good game i've got to say it was very back and forth but i kind of feel like t-gun was you know, he didn't do quite as well as he probably could have in the fact that he... I definitely think he invested in a lot of yeah. aggressive moves that when they didn't quite pay off, right. let Vibe's overall more macro strategy really start to shine and just completely overwhelm him in the later game. Yeah, indeed. So. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and switch over to the waiting screen and pop right on into the next game here in just a minute or two, so don't go anywhere.